Good morning, Streamline Church. Good morning. <laughs> All right, come on, guys. Stand up your feet. We have a we have a reason to praise this morning. Come on, guys. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning you've given us. God, we're going to use the praise. We're going to use it to lift up your name, Lord. And Jesus, as we, as we dive deeper down to your presence, Jesus, as we dive down deeper to your presence, Lord, we're going to make sure, Lord, we lift up. We thank you, Jesus, name. Come on, guys. In the presence of my enemies. 
God, that's just who you are. This is who you are, Jesus. Unstoppable. Unmatched. Lord, your power cannot be fathomed. Your love cannot be fathomed, Lord, that you have for us, Jesus. Despite all we do, Lord, you are there. Watching over us and pursuing us, Jesus. So, Father God, right now, we pursue you.
church, we declare that. second it said the the father's arms are open wide that means this it doesn't matter how wide your garbage is your frustrations are your burdens are 
His arms stretch bigger than anything that you can carry. And so today what I want to do is I want to invite you to a time of being at the altar. I think maybe there's some of us, there's a drive and there's a desire to want to get into the, the Lord's presence even more. And, and I, want to, I want to make that statement for you that would you come to the altar today? We're going to have our prayer team up here on the sides if you want prayer. So if you guys would go ahead and come. And uh, we got some fellas who will pray with the fellas and ladies and with the ladies. But if you, if you were just saying, hey, look, I need to be at the altar today. And you, you can just be here to worship. You don't need to get prayer. But you're just like, man, Lord, I need you to fill me. Lord, I want you to come. And I need your arms open wide. I feel vulnerable. I feel insecure. I feel like things are going to fall apart. So, Lord, I come, Lord, to your arms that welcome us today, Lord. Father, we're coming to seek more of your presence more of your power. Lord, would you fill us today with your spirit and with your goodness today. Father, with your joy. Lord, you are the joy and the lifter of our heads. So, Father, we come into your presence, Lord, to get closer to you. Lord, to receive from you today as we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless who you are. Lord, we bless your altar today where you sit on the circle of the earth. Lord, besides you, there is no other God. We come to you this morning morning lifting hands church would you lift hands would you give him glory and would you give him praise today seek him that he may be found by you come on come to the altar let's sing that today come on come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with
altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus One more time, church. Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Before we, we close here, I just wanted to come up here. I felt like the Lord put something on my heart that there's someone here who was just heavy burdened with guilt today. And and you just don't you, you just feel guilty maybe before the Lord and you just want to seek forgiveness, but you feel like, man, you're too far, you're too low. And you would just say, Lord, I need you to forgive me today. I want things to be clean. You know what's great is his faith, his uh, forgiveness is faithful. He never quits. He never stops. All we do is come to him. And so I want to just get a moment here where maybe you close your eyes and maybe you're saying, look, I just need to ask the Lord for forgiveness. That doesn't mean you're a terrible person. We all have sin. We all have funk. We all have burdens. But today, if you're here and you just say, man, I'm at the place. I just, I just need the Lord to forgive me for some stuff. I want to be in that. I want to be in that good place. Would you raise your hand today? If that's you, even on the screen, maybe you're raising your hand at home and where you're at. But let's go ahead and pray. Father, we come to you today and we receive your forgiveness. Lord, you are faithful and just and you will forgive. Lord, you never give up on us. Lord, no matter how much we have self-inflicted wounds or we inflict wounds, Lord, in our spirit or in our heart, or Lord, we're offensive to you. Lord, you still have your arms open wide to forgive us. And so, Father, I just pray on behalf of every person here, Lord, needing and longing for forgiveness today. Lord, will you forgive us of our sins? Will you forgive us of every trespass? Lord, would you wipe it all away? Would you, Lord, make you, would you um, take our dirty garments, Lord, and would you make them white as snow today? That, Lord, when you look at us, you don't see our filth, you see Jesus. Father, we ask for that forgiveness today, Lord. And we receive that, God. Lord, we are new before you. The old is gone. The new has come. Sons are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, just touch your feet today, man. We do better than that. If we can chant more sports today, if we can chant for anything going on on TV, we can give a shout of praise for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Why don't you say hi to someone real quick before you sit down. If you're watching online at home, Streamline family, make sure you say what's up. All right, good morning. We're glad that you're with us today at Streamline Church. And man, you guys look like you love each other. That's good. That's good. Well, hey, we um, today, uh, Suya, our worship leader, um, is, uh, you know, she had a vacation, a time away planned. And so uh, she's gone today, and wouldn't you know it, at the same time, Josh and Amy, we got a picture of them here a little while back. They got an ultrasound. Their ultrasound has two babies in there. God bless them twice. And this week, they had their little twin babies. 
Aren't, isn't that cool? Two little girls, Zelda and Sophia. I got it. I got it. And so, uh, so we were like, um, Suya's gone. What are we going to do? Because Josh's, Josh's wife is having babies and, and he's caught up and he was so, uh, freaking out the other day. It was awesome. I loved it. But, um, he's like, I can still come and do worship. And so we asked his boss first, come on, I'm just, we're just keeping it real. And so she said, yeah, so he is here today. Um, really, he's just here to get a break. That's what it really is. Come on. You've been up for eight hours. All right. So he is, uh, but he came out and he led us in worship. What a powerful time. Can you thank our worship team? And so thank you, brother, for hanging out and being with us today. Hey, um, I want to uh, let you know of something special that we have coming up. And uh, we did this a couple of years in a row before we went through the whole COVID uh, season. And uh, it was back in 2019, we went on our last missions trip to Baja, California. And so down in Mexico, uh, we, were, we, th- we were there, we went down and we sent a team of about 20 people. 20 people volunteered their time, took their vacation, raised money to go, and then we built a house for some homeless people down in Mexico. And so it was incredible. How many of you have gone before uh, one of the times that we went? Raise your hand. All right, we have a couple. Okay, we have, we have more though. And so what we're doing is now that we're kind of out of, uh, you know, that season of COVID, now we're going back again to Baja. All right. And so uh, we're starting up this missions trip and uh, we're going to be going in July. You see the information that's there for you, but there's a QR code. And here's how we want to help you out is that if you hit, hit up this QR code with your phone, if you take your phone out, you can go ahead and scan this and it'll take you right to a page on our website that has the PDF, the packet with everything you need to know. And so in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a meeting that just, uh, you, you know, just kind of an interest meeting, an information meeting, and uh, we'll be able to go over things and answer your questions, but anyone can go. We've taken, uh, you know, some, some 13-year-olds. We've taken some older people, uh, you know, but, but we just have a team. We're all generations. We come together, and it is a great time of uh, teaming up together for one week to build a home for a family in need. And so I want to invite you to consider, uh, prayerfully consider doing that. Again, there's a QR code that's there. You can scan that, and you can get all of the details and information, and we will be filling you in for more information as uh, the weeks continue, okay? One thing that's kind of different uh, that we've done is along with doing, you know, we got QR codes like crazy. How many of you are like QR coded out? You just see them everywhere, right? You go into restrooms, you go into restaurants, you go, you go everywhere and there are QR codes. Well, you can register that way in a lot of things we do, but even we have developed, for some of you who are old school, we have a sign-up wall in the lobby now. And so if there's any information you need or you just say, look, give me a pen and paper. That's all I need. That's all I need. Back in the, uh, in the lobby when you leave today, there is a uh, sign up, just has different events that are happening. And you can go ahead and sign up for what you want and we'll get you more information. Speaking of sign ups, I got some eye candy making me look bad this yeah, morning. Yeah, you do. This is my daughter. And, and Hello, this is, uh, good morning, right, and this is my good friend, Marshall. They're going to help fill you in on some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome, you guys. Good morning. I'm Leah. I'm Marshall. And, um, Hi, Leah. Hi. And we just wanted to take time to welcome any guests. If you're a guest and it's your first time, can you just slip a hand up? We have these welcome cards that you can fill out. And then in the back at the end of service, um, you can just turn them into our welcome bar. And we have a gift for you. If you are online, we want to connect with you. Today is actually National Happiness Day. Happiness. So comment something that makes you happy, a reason why you're happy today. Why are you happy today? Church, the weather, it's about Amen. to be summer. So, yeah. All right. All right. And then um, we're Why am I happy? Why are you happy? You know why? Because I'm doing announcements with you. And you know why? Because I've known you from day one. The this, day is you were this isn't Marshall, okay? This is Big in. So that's that's pretty cool. All right. And um, for those who want to give, how can we give? We can give by, a, I guess, a QR code 
I guess we got that. And then text or online. That's the way I give. Or you can do it at the donation station in the back. Yeah. All right. And then if you volunteer at this church, in a couple weeks we are having a volunteers meeting. So just make sure to connect with your leader um, so then you can be a part of that. We want to thank you guys. And we have a men's breakfast coming up next week, next Saturday. So, men, today's your last day to sign up. So you guys got to sign up today. And you can do that with a QR code. I'm not hip with that, the QR code. Or you can meet me out in the lobby. I'm going to be standing up by that sign-up wall. Come and see me and give me your money. Or at least let me know you're coming. But you, you join on the QR. All right? All right. And then um, can you pray for the offering, please? Yeah. But you know, I want to say something about the offering. So always at this time, before I tithe, I always never liked this time. You know, but I'd be sitting in the church and I never cared for this time. I don't know why. I guess I was. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. So, dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for the that we can give to you, Lord. That we can give back to you, and you will multiply it. You will. You will make it bigger, Lord. Whatever we give, if it's. You know, what, whatever the amount we give, you, you can make it bigger for your glory, for your church. So bless this day. Bless this offering, Lord, in your mighty name. Amen. All right, all right. Hey, well, Marshall, do you like it now or you? I was like, he's like, I hate this time. I'm going to pray for it. Dear God, help us, you know, change my attitude. But you're, you're cool now. You're cool now. All right. He's happy now. I knew he was going somewhere that it was like a cliffhanger, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hey, uh, we're going to be jumping into the word of God this morning. Come on. Look at all your pretty faces. Hey, I want to tell you about uh, a series that I'm starting next week called Battles. Everybody say Battles. How many of you, it just seems like you always have something that you're battling through in some way? And so for the next three weeks, I'm going to start a series just simply called Battles. And whatever it is that you may be going through or maybe you've been carrying for a while or you can see is just up coming up in the future, there's a bridge that you've got to cross I want you to come and be reminded we can overcome and have victory in battles, but we've got to learn how. We've got to learn how, all right? So everybody say, I'm going to learn today. Come on, you are. And so we're going to continue this series called Open Hands, Open Heaven. Everybody say, Open Hands, Open Heaven. And so we're concluding this series today. Bro, you're, you're good, man. Are you falling asleep up here or... You, you, you can, you, you're, you're free to, okay. He's going to start playing nursery music, right? <laughs> Rockabye baby on the, okay, anyway, anyway, <laughs> don't go fall asleep, man. Don't, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Anyway, man, we, we just have fun here, right? Come on. You guys are a hot mess. I love it. I love it. Anyway, hey, uh, we're continuing this series. Actually, today is the last day of this series. And today, what I did was I titled this message, Beat It. Everybody say, Beat It. Beat it. All right, I know you're thinking of MJ right now, but you're, you're going to understand why I'm talking about, talking from this subject called Beat It. And uh, this is the third week, and, and I know sometimes it can be frustrating, like Marshall didn't like the time of offering before, he's, I'm just repeating what he's saying, and, and, and we would come in, and it's kind of like, oh, dear God, you're talking about money in church, I can't believe it, I knew it, they're going to take something from me, or they want, we're not here to manipulate you, we're not here to try to get from you, because I say this all the time, I've been saying it for years, I don't want anything from you, I want something for you. And what we do is when we give a tithe, 10%, what we talk about, we've been talking about it, is that we're giving to God through the church and knowing that God is going to just look after us and watch over us. Now, now check this out. Today, today I'm going to share probably the greatest reason 
why I tithe. Probably the number one reason why I give 10% of my income, and I think for Lori too, and it's so powerful, and this is where, uh, you, you know, because I'm not in like get rich. I don't have to have a lot of money. I, I, don't, I don't care about that. I just, I just want to be blessed in my life. And whatever God determines, how he determines to bless me, I'm cool with. But today I'm going to talk about something that is uh, probably the largest, the biggest reason why we tithe. And I want us to see this today. We're going to go to a classic scripture in the Old Testament called Malachi. Everybody say Malachi. It's Malachi, but it just sounds Italian that way, right? Yo, Malachi, you know. Okay, anyway, any, anyway, I'm not even Italian. I'm just doing that, okay? Anyway, but, but there's a classic series of scriptures in the Old Testament In the book of Malachi, that's like the classic scriptures where pastors or ministers go when they're going to talk about this thing called the tithe or 10%. And what I want you to see today, I want you to try and see it in a different light and get the undertones of what are being communicated in this series of scriptures. Because... What's happening is, is we can see how, man, there's some strong words that God says here that can make you feel bad, that can make you feel guilty. But I want you to see this. In the undertones of everything that he is saying that are even kind of like up front, he just puts us on frustrate. Even with that, beyond that, is there's this undertone of God saying this, look, I care about you. I want to watch out for you. I want to look after you. I want to bless you. I want to increase what you have. Not that we're in this for getting rich, but I want to make life more quality for you. That's the heart of God. It's not like, look, I gave you some. Give back. That's not what it's about. That's not God's heart. He wants to give. And here's the thing. It, it is very difficult, I think, if when, when we're getting to this place and we're trying to get over this faith hump where we, we just can't get the concept right because it doesn't sound humanly or uh, earthly. It doesn't make any sense in that area. And we're trying to wrap our minds around that. How do I, am I supposed to give something? And you're saying things are going to get even better. You know, I don't know if you remember this. It was like last year, I think, uh, this whole phenomenon was happening here, this, this broom challenge. How many of you know what I'm talking about, the broom challenge? And how many of you actually did the challenge at home? You did. I'm going to tell you, uh, so I did it. I, I heard about this, and, and uh, someone, someone said this. I saw it on social media. I'm like, that's a lie, man. I, I, don't, I don't believe that. And, and so I, I saw all these, and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try it, and I'm going to see. I'm going to test this thing out and see if it will actually prove to work. Now, I know some have said you can do it any day of the week, and last night, um, e- even now, it wasn't just that one season that they said this is when you can do it, but I know this. I tried it back then, and last night I was trying it, and I just couldn't. It would stay for a second, and then it just starts leaning. But, but about a year ago, on the, the day or the week that they said that you could do this, it was standing, and it never fell down. And I'm watching this thing, and it was like a phenomenon, something that didn't make sense, but this broom is standing on its own. I just wish it swept on its own. Come on, somebody. Right? Right. But it was, but it was a phenomenon. And I want to tell you something. When you tithe and you give 10% to the Lord, it's a phenomenon. It's supernatural. We can't explain it. It's not natural in our eyes. It doesn't make earthly sense or humanly sense. But there's something that happens that when I test it out, then I try it. I see it actually happening. And, and what I'm talking about today is I'm going to talk about where we put our security at with what we have. And just like, I'm going to place this right here. Just like I was trying to wrap my head around this phenomenon of the broom, that's exactly where you kind of journey down when you're talking about faith because it doesn't make sense. Which, by the way, God's way never makes sense, but it always proves to be true. Come on, you guys are ready this morning. Now check this out. Um, A lot of people are looking for, we all are basically looking for financial security. So I decided to Google financial security and, and this is what I came up with. I just, I just found four, but here is the six plus one system for achieving financial security. Here is three steps to financial security, okay? 
Here's 10 tips for achieving financial security. Man, we we got some good ones. And here are five proven ways to achieve financial security. There's all these different ways that people come up with to try to master, to try and find financial security for us. And check this out. God says, I got one way that brings you financial security. And not only do I have one way that I tell you clearly is how you do it and the way you do it, but I guarantee I'm going to take care of that, making sure that you have the security that you need if you just do your part. And he's saying, look, you can go and you can go to the 10 steps and the the four proven ways and you can find all of those, which everybody's trying to think of, everybody's trying to teach, but a lot of people just aren't doing it because we're confused. And he's saying, look, if you just do the one, If you just do the one, that's why we believe this, that the tithe is our insurance policy. The tithe, I will, the tithe is our insurance policy. The 10% is that I know everything is going to be all right when I tithe. Some of you are like, you're crazy. No, it's not. It's a phenomenon. It's supernatural. It doesn't make sense. But I want you to see this is the reality that God wants us to see here is that when you're faithful with the tithe, your security comes along with it. And you can have expectations. It's like your 401k. You expect it to accrue over time. The stocks and the shares that you get on Wall Street, when you buy those or when you save up, you expect interest and growth to happen. And when we go and we tithe, we need to expect that security and God's blessing and God's provision and increase is going to happen. I'm not trying to give you a prosperity thing to where you give, God gives. I'm just saying there's some security when we give to the Lord. And when we look at this series of scriptures in Malachi, we're going to open up here in chapter 3. I want you to see the undertones of what he's saying. That you can trust me. I want to do for you. I'm here to be with you. I'm here to watch over you. And it looks like this. It says, I mean, he, he, just, he just doesn't play around at first. You know, how many of you guys are like, I just want to hear the truth. Just tell me like it is and let me deal with it. Okay. All right. We finna do that right now. Okay. Will a man rob or defraud God? Defraud simply means to deprive. Will a man rob or deprive God? Yet you rob and, dep- and depri- or deprive or defraud me. But you say, in what way do we rob or defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you are robbing me, even this whole nation, like all of y'all. Okay, it's not just a couple, it's all y'all are are doing it. And he wants, he's calling them to a place of, please come so I can do more. And this is where he goes. Bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse. We tithe to God through the church that there may be food in my house and prove me now by it. Prove me, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven, open hands, open heaven, If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour, everybody say pour, not just sprinkle or salt, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke the devourer, which are locusts, the insects and and plagues. And they knew that in this time, agriculturally, that there were these locusts that were destruction. And and that's actually what locust is uh, symbolic for, is destruction and devastation. That he's saying, look, I will go ahead and I'll rebuke it. I will put a stop to, stop to it. I will beat it back. The locusts, the insects, and the plagues for your sakes. For whose sake? For yours, for your, for mine. He said, I'm gonna do this for you. I'm not gonna just do this randomly. I'm gonna do this for you. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts, or the Lord of the the heavenly armies. What God is, I want you to see this, the spirit of what we're reading is God is saying this, uh, under all of it, even when he's just speaking truth and up front, 
The rest of it, even the underlying, underlying theme of that is, look, if you do your part, I can do my part. Like, I want to do my part to bless you. I, I want you to just correct some ways and, and get around some ways because I want to bless you and I want to increase and I want to do more in what you have. I want to bring you security. But we have to do our part. Everybody say our part. We have to do our part so God can do his part. God wants to bless us and watch over us and give to us. And that's one of the greatest things that I know is that the security that I get from God is up to me. I want you to see, there's some things in your notes today I want you to write down. Hopefully it motivates you, it challenges and it grows your faith today that you would say, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to step over that line or maybe I'm willing to begin to be even more faithful than I have been with what God requires or says of me that I'm in a good place with God and I'm in a place where he can watch over, he can bless and he will take care of me. This last scripture says this, and all nations shall call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. He wants to come and he wants to, he wants to let you know that he wants you to be known for a people that are blessed, that are taken care of, that are under God's covering and in watching over you. And, and I want you to see this. There's, there's some notes today you, you've got you've to take. You've got to write some of these things down. Is we invite security and prosperity or we invite scarcity and poverty? Okay, I want you to hear that. We, I, I invite security and prosperity or I invite scarcity and poverty. I invite the security in my spirit. I invite that by how I'm faithful to the Lord. I invite security in my spirit and also with open hands because the way I am, that there's prosperity, there's, there's greater things that God wants to do because to whom much is given, much is required. And the more that we are open and more that we give and we're faithful to the Lord, the more security we have and the more he can trust us and the more he can do for us in our lives. But if I don't do that, then what I'm inviting is, I'm, I'm inviting scarcity. Like, I'm barely making it. I'm, I'm running thin. There's, there's barely anything there. And, and then I'm in poverty to where I don't have, so I'm trying to grab and get anywhere I can. And nobody wants to live a life of that. Nobody does. And so what he's saying is you can have this security and prosperity or you can have this scarcity and poverty. And, and, and when we have this security and prosperity, we're a blessed people. But when we're, we're not faithful, here's what happens. We become scarce. And, and we're not a people under blessing. We're, under, we're a people under a curse, and we're just kind of left. And God isn't doing anything. God, we're not able to find what we really desire and have from the Lord. And in, in the scripture, I want you to see this. In the book of Haggai, when they weren't just being faithful the way God wanted, he just told them, look, this is what's happening. And this is why it's happening, and this is what it looks like. And it says in verse number 1, 5 through 6, chapter 5 one, uh, through 6, it says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. It's like he's pay attention. Hey, think about it. Kind of review, rehearse, rewind. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on your clothes, but, <laughs> but are not warm. You earn wages and only to put them in a purse with holes in it. You are trying and, and you're grabbing and you're having because you're not being faithful to the Lord. And he's just correcting them saying, look, if you're faithful and you do this, you're not going to experience this at all. But we're the ones that give out the invitation and God's like, if you invite me in by being faithful to me, I can do something and I can bring blessing into your life. And it's kind of like, um, you, you know, an invitation we would give if someone came to our door and scarcity and poverty showed up at the door and we're like, hey, hey come on in. Hey, scarcity, come on in here. Why don't you sit at the table, the kitchen table? Hey, hey, poverty, the bathroom's over here. 
right? The bedroom's over there. You can go ahead and have your way, take what you want and have what you want, and, and you're welcome to come in. <laughs> come on in, you're welcome. Or we can go a different route and say, hey, prosperity, you take any room you want. Security, you can have the couch, you can have the bed, you can have the kitchen, but I entrust it all to you because I'm just going to be faithful what I have when I have this tenth and I'm giving God something to work with. I'm giving God something that, I, that, uh, that he is able to do something better than what I do for myself. And I want you to see this next point that we're going into this morning. If God doesn't get anything to work with, he can't work. If God doesn't get anything to work with, he can't work. It's, it, he's, he's talking about giving the tithe and that's where it begins and all of this blessing and the things God wants to do and move in your life and give you favor and give you new things you want. And, but if we don't give faithfully the way that God requires, it's kind of like he's just standing here with the broom. I, hey, I, I want to. But you're not giving me anything to work with. And, and, and I, and I want to be there. I don't want the devourer to have his way. I want to protect you and I want to give you security. Secure, I said security. Okay, I've been watching too much. Anyway, I, I want to give you some security. But, but you're leaving me out. And if you would only give me something to work with, I can work for you. But if we don't, what happens is the devourer comes. And what's interesting is, is it's mentioned there, the, the devourer in the scriptures that we're reading, and, but it's referring to locusts. Can I teach you a little bit? Can I, we have a little Bible teaching for a second? There's something that's so key that is mentioned in the scripture because when it says locust, it's not just talking about one type of locust. They know in the Old Testament there were four different types. And I want to look at these four different types of locusts for us to see the four different levels of the devourer that comes in and wants to take and ruin your security. It says this in, in Joel. It says what the gnawing locust has left. Everybody say gnawing. After the gnawing locust has come and attacked what you have, the swarming locust has eaten. And what the swarming locust has left, the creeping locust has eaten. And what the creeping locust has left, the stripping locust has eaten. These four different types of locusts are breaking into your house. Breaking in your house and saying, I'm going to take everything I can. I'm going to ruin your life. And today, I just want to break these down a little bit so that we can see how this comes into our life and interrupts if we allow the devourer to come in and we allow security to fade away from God. I'm telling you, this is the, the main reason, the, the number one reason why I give is I don't want to be eaten up by the devourer. I want God to have control and God to run my house. And so it talks about the gnawing locust, which the gnawing locust, what they would do is they come and they would eat the fruit of the tree, whether it's apples or whatever it is. They go and they'd eat away at the fruit. They'd eat away at the good stuff. The, the feeling of what the whole thing was planted for. The enjoyable part. And see, what happens is, we can allow this gnawing type of locust to come in, and our pleasure is devoured. I want you to see this. There's going to be some levels here. This is where our pleasure is devoured. How many of you know that God wants to bless you to where you actually have pleasure and you enjoy what God has given? You enjoy it. And... And if we look at it this way, it's like, man, the opportunities to be able to bless other people, that's been eaten up, that's been devoured. The, the fine things that we've been, able, we've been given by God and he's allowed us to be able to make nice purchases and do nice things and go on nice trips because God wants us to have pleasure. The locust that has come and devoured the pleasure that we have, that's what he wants to do and so it trims back. And then after the, the gnawing locusts has come in, now the swarming locusts have come in. The swarming locusts was a group that would expand and they would increase and multiply in number and they would come and attack the tree. And when they would come and uh, uh, attack the tree, they would go after the leaves. And they would start eating away at the leaves. And the reason is, is because that's where all the nutrients come from and the water and the protection from the sun to give just enough sunlight for the fruit to grow. When we 
aren't faithful and God isn't in what we have, provision is devoured. Here it was, the pleasure is devoured by the gnawing locust, but now the swarming locust has come in and it's eaten away at all of our provision. And what that looks like is this, is now, now I'm barely trying to make it. I, I've got this devourer, I'm opening it up for him to come and eat. And so now it's being devoured to where, man, it's hard to keep the electricity on. Now, now I've, I've, I've got just things in the yard that i got to take care of, and, and I'm trying to make sure my kids have clothes, and I'm trying to stretch here and there, and I'm, I'm doing everything I can to make ends meet, and what the devourer does and comes, and he says, I'm going to eat away at those two. And then we get to a place to where we're having such a hard time that we start borrowing money from other people. Then we start getting in debt because we're trying, and we're just getting buried and buried and buried. And that's because the swarming locusts has come in and this devour to take away our provisions. It's the gnawing locusts, then the swarming locusts, and then the creeping locusts. I mean, there's just wave after wave after wave. The creeping Locusts would come in and begin to eat away at the limbs and at the branches. The structure to be able to hold up the leaves and to be able to hold up the fruit. And if you don't have this, you can't have the provisions and the leaves. And you have to have that growth so that you can see the fruit. But if you lost the fruit and you lost the nutrients and you lost everything you need to be healthy and your provisions. And now you've gotten to where you've lost your structure. It's the, your posture is devoured. Let me explain this to your posture. The things that hold up your life and make life functional. That because we haven't been faithful to the Lord and he's saying, look, I'm going to try and rebuke the devourer, but until then you have the devourer. As the devourer is going to come and begin, all of a sudden your car is going to break down. Then, then your car is going to break down and i got to put it in the shop and now the auto body shop gets my money. The devourer is working. Then the dishwasher goes out. Then all of a sudden, it's, it's school time, and i got to buy school clothes, and how, I'm, how am I going to make that happen? And now my kid got hurt, and now he's going to the hospital, and now that one's happening, and, and I've got these things that are just coming from different areas, and my structural support is breaking down because this locust, this creeping locust, is creeping into every area of my life. Man, these locusts, this wave that's coming in and gnawing, and it's swarming, and then it's creeping, and then if that's not bad enough, the last one is the worst, where it's stripping. The stripping locus. To where I'll take everything you have left. And probably the most important thing that we have left are our emotions. The stripping locust comes in and he takes the bark, and then he takes the trunk, and he goes all the way down and takes everything within there, and it begins to die. And the hardest thing is now when our protection is devoured. Everything we have set up to be able to have things provided, things needed, things that are there to make sure we can live a life that we, that we enjoy. The enjoyment is gone. And now the stripping locust comes in and he devours our peace. And our peace is now traded for frustration and stress. And now what's happening is we don't have unity in the home because there's harmony and God is involved in our finances and involved in what we do. Now there's arguing and there's division in my home. And now there's frustration and now we're, we're losing things and we're afraid that we're going to be kicked out or we're gonna, someone's going to come and repossess the car and all of these things. It's all attacking us because the enemy wants to come. The devourer is going to send locusts to come and attack and take what you want or God can come in. He can come in and rebuke the devourer, saying, he is not coming new, near your tent or your house. I'm going to rebuke him. I'm going to stop the devourer from coming in and invading and taking from you. But you got to give me something. You got to give me something. And this next point is so, so uh, important for us. If we're going to see God rebuke us, things work out when God gets to work for us. Now I want you to see this. Things work out in your life. I'm not saying you're going to become, you know, a billionaire or a millionaire. That's not what I got into serving God for anyway. Things work out when God, I want you to see this, when God gets to. God wants to. 
when God gets to work for us. Or look at it this way. When God gets to work, when we go ahead and we take off the chains, we're faithful, and God is getting to work, and he's working for us and doing everything he can. And he is rebuking and pushing back the devourer and everything he wants to take from us. Now, I personally, I personally know a devourer. God has placed a devourer in my life, and it's my son Titus. <laughs> he is a devourer. He devours. We go through so much food, it's ridiculous. He eats more than me. The, the amount of dozens of eggs that we buy all the time, he is devouring. As a matter of fact, when he eats, he sounds like a devourer. I mean, they're snorting and, you know, all this noise. I'm like, dear God, turn up the TV. I can't handle this, man. And, but he's devouring. And at some point, it's like, all right, stop. You got to go somewhere else. I can't handle this. Right? And what, what, is, hey, what does God's word say right there? I'm, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. I'm, rebuke, it means to beat it out. He's saying, I'm going to beat out the devourer. I'm not going to just say, would you politely please go? God's saying, no, I'm going to beat him out. I'm going to get rid of him. He won't be able to come near you. He won't be able to touch you. This is what God does when he says, you've been faithful and I got security and I got prosperity for you. Not scarcity and not poverty. That's what he has for us. He's just working away. And Joel says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. Everything you've wanted, I'm going to give to you. Everything you've needed or must have, I'm going to give to you. Everything you have desired or longed for, I'm going to give you. It may not come in dollars and cents, but it's going to come in the security and the provision and the fruit and the things, the pleasures. I'm going to give it to you. And I want you to see this. God doesn't have to. God wants to. Come on, brother, right on time. God doesn't have to. God wants to do this in your life. If we would just say, God, I'm going to be faithful with what you've given me. And this tithe thing, this phenomenon, this thing I can't understand, I'm going to give it back so I can see God bring the, the security. And that is the number one reason why I tithe. It's like, I just want to be secure. And I am insecure when I don't give God his portion. I don't want to look back and say, this scarcity and poverty, that's my fault. But I know whether I go through times of scarcity and poverty and I've been tithing and I've been getting faithful that God has an answer on the other side because he won't leave me and he won't forsake me and he's gonna bring me to security and prosperity if I bring him in. Come on, somebody, don't make me. That's what he wants to do for every single one of us if we're faithful. Josh, you can come on up and... And join me. I want you to see something. Every one of us here, we are creating and de developing a reputation for ourselves. Every one of you are known for something. Good, bad, ugly. Respected or disrespected. Admired or not admired. As a matter of fact, you know people that have a reputation. You have, you have formed your opinion about them. You, you have, you've made judgments on them. You have labeled them. That's what they are. You've been labeled. It's just a reputation that we have. It's, it's like kind of, this is the way that person lives and what they do. And, and it's not bad all the time. It's just, this is kind of what they're known for. And what God wants to give us an incredible reputation. I want you to see, I want to go back to Malachi 3.10 again. And it says, and, everybody say and. After I've opened up the windows of heaven, after I pushed back and kicked out and beat out the devourer, and I've given you so much you can't handle it, he says, and nations shall call you happy and blessed. 
for you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. He's saying, I want you to have a reputation of being a blessed and happy people. I want people to see me working in your life. That I'm there and you're not going to have scarcity and poverty. You're going to have security and prosperity. I want them to see, I want them to know you're blessed and you're happy. I want them to look at you and say, I don't know what it is. They do this tithe thing and something, they still make it through anyway. Or when things go bad, they're not freaking out. For some reason, they think God's going to take care of them. That's because we are blessed and we are happy. And he's saying, I'm going to make it a place of delight. That is the reputation that he wants you to have, not one to where, I don't know if I can afford it. I don't know if I can make it. And man, I, maybe next year and, and everything else. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just saying, this is the reputation he wants to give you. we trust him. Back in the 1800s, I think it was 1836, someone submitted a request to Congress to put in God we trust on money. And when they did, their whole purpose was and their explanation was is because We want to make sure we're a nation that trusts in God and not in things that could be destroyed. And so the first time that they did that, they put it on a a two cent coin and that was there. And And then it was there for all those decades. And then it got to 1957 and they finally put it on the paper bills. And it, and it says it right there, really clear, clear, right above one. It says in God, we trust in in God we trust when it comes to handling this and going through life following God are we going to trust in this or are we going to like it says in God I trust that I would I would be reminded now we got electronic money now and we got all these things but when I go and I and I make a purchase or I pay a bill, am I able to say, but in God I trust. I don't, I don't trust in this. It's in God I trust. And maybe that should be a reminder for you and I. So that whenever we use what God has given us, but God, it's in you I trust. See, we can trust in this or we can trust in this. Follow me. One gives peace. The other one doesn't. One gives security. The other one doesn't. One gives you a meaning for living. One doesn't. One will stress you out. The other one won't. One will give you abundance. The other one cannot give you abundance. One will make promises it can keep. One will not. One will give you more than you can handle. The other one always comes up empty. You will find hope in this word. One can give you hope and one cannot give you hope. It's only found in the word of God. And which one will you look for to find purpose and to find hope and to find peace? Because this one fades. One lasts forever. The other one fades away and it is gone. This lasts forever. I trust in the only financial security that I know that I will be at peace. I will be okay. I will be prosperous. It's not in that dollar. Whoever wants to grab it, they got breakfast this Sunday. Come on, men. Which one? Which one? Now, here's the thing. We all know that money is a very, very far second to where we're going to spend eternity with our soul, right? We are far more willing to put so much trust in this and then just go ahead and we're easily to put, easy, easily we put our trust in the Lord with eternity. 
Which one are you going to trust with your soul today? If you're not a Christian, man, you should feel really insecure right now. I know of hell in the Bible. I don't ever plan on experiencing it or know what it's like. But I, but I know what this says about heaven. And someday, I'm going to be at the pearly gates. And he's going to welcome me into that place. And he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enjoy everything I have. And I'm going to walk down that golden road to be in the pre presence of God before the throne of God and be able to stand there. And my life is rich. It's not poor. Where are you going to place your trust for your life? Would you close your eyes for a minute? If you're not a Christian, even if you're here, or you're with us on live stream, part of the Streamline family. Right now, I, I just want you to ask yourself to evaluate your soul and your eternity and where you're going to be. Because we want to trust God with what we have. We do. We do. But man, I want the Lord to have my soul, my life for the rest of my life. And if you're not here today and you don't, if you're here today and you don't know, you're not secure with your eternity, and you say, I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Maybe you faded away. Maybe you're saying, I'm just kind of hearing this for the first time, but I want security for eternity in heaven with God. I want my sins forgiven. I want to be all made new. I want to find purpose for life. Would you raise your hand today? I want to pray with you. Anybody here today? Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you, too. Yes, yes. God bless you guys. Anybody else today? Yes, I see you in the back on the right. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else here today? Anybody else here today? What we're going to do is we're going to pray a sinner's prayer. This doesn't mean everything's perfect and rosy. What this means is, God, today and tomorrow and the day after that, I'm going to begin to trust you with my life. You have my soul. You have my future. So I want you to just pray after me, repeat after me. Man, isn't the presence of God here so strong right now? Say, dear Lord. Come on, say, dear Lord. I need you. I will now. Come on, I will now begin to trust you with my life. Everything I have is yours. I gladly lay it down. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me, for shedding your blood and wiping away all my sin. Today I leave a life of sin. I repent for a great future ahead. I ask you to be my Savior. Today, Jesus... I make you the leader of my life. Lord, thank you for new life. Now you have mine. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Can we just give the glory to God today and praise the Lord. Now for those of you who raised your hand and you said, look, I want to give my life to Christ, it just begins one day at a time. And especially every Sunday, just coming to church and saying, look, I just want to build on what I've had before and continue to grow and watch God do amazing things, all right? I want us to just grow and have trust and faith in the Lord. I want you to have security in what you have and to see God bless what you have. I want you to see, I want you to have palms up type of living, open hands in the open heaven that God wants to give. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me today? We're going to... Go ahead and close with a blessing. Man, God's presence is here, and I want you to do this. I want you to carry it out to your car in the rest of the day and just be thankful to the Lord for what he's given you. Come on, somebody. Amen. All right, just so you know, you can go to the sign-up wall. There's some things there, even some child dedications. If you want to take part in that, we have that too. Uh, you can sign up, but things are on the wall there, okay? You can give on the way out. We have the kiosks there, but I'm so glad that you're here this morning to get in the presence of the Lord.
right. Church, you are God's treasure possession. Your heavenly Father is proud of you. He watches over you, and he will take care of you. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and he will help you. Because of Jesus Christ, you can be anything, and you can do anything. You are the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. You are a difference maker. Nothing can take away God's greatness in your life. You are blessed. Amen. God bless you guys.